The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Stay up to date with everything happening with Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. Go to RonniePhillips.org and subscribe to our email list so you can be the first to know about mission trips, new ministry resources, how to watch Pastor Ronnie, and when he will be speaking in a city near you. Subscribe to his podcast so you never miss a sermon. And partner with him today for just $10 a month to help him deliver hope and help through missions, media, and the message of grace. Don't miss a sermon or a show. Subscribe to Pastor Ronnie's YouTube channel and be sure to turn on notifications so you'll know when he uploads a new video. Follow him on Instagram too for more exclusive content. Hey, greetings partners and friends. It's Pastor Ronnie Phillips, lead pastor of Abbas House in Chattanooga, Tennessee and founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. This week we're going to be bringing you part two of a message I preach, Something Stinks. That's a crazy title, I know, but it comes from the Hebrew word bahash, and it is God's reaction to our worship. You know, God is calling His church to worship again, and this message was brought about by the Holy Spirit convicting me that I was giving off the wrong kind of aroma. I know preachers are taught we've got to fake it until we make it, but you know, sometimes I struggle. Sometimes I give off the wrong kind of aroma. So this message came from my heart. You heard part one last time. You're going to hear part two today, but we're going to catch you up. We hope that you'll tune in, you'll focus, you'll open your mind and your heart and your ears and hear what God has for you. And I came across this word in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and it messed with me. The word is bahash, bahash. As I was studying this word, the Lord spoke to me, put an impression on my spirit And I don't really know how to say this without being honest, but he said, Ronnie, you stink. I said, what do you mean I stink? He said, you've given off the wrong kind of odor. I said, Lord, I'm an ambassador of your grace. I've I'm on TV now everywhere. I've preached eight crusades. I'm now the pastor for three years. I've been honored in the community. What do you mean I stink? He said, you're on autopilot. You've learned how to do ministry, but you've forgotten at times the source of ministry said, remember when you came back to me, how you'd cry and lay on the floor for hours, praising me and praying. And now you're a professional. I didn't call you to be a professional. I called you because you had a heart after me. And the only way I'm going to keep you is if you cleanse yourself and you start giving off a new odor because right now you stink. And so I did what the Bible says we all should do. I cleansed myself in his blood and in his spirit. And I believe that worship is the missing jewel of the church. You see, in the Christian life, we go through three different phases and we progress from one to the other. The first is identification. When you get saved, you understand that you are a body of flesh, that you are a sinner, you confess your sins, you ask Christ to come into your heart, cleanse you, and you realize that what you did was not who you are and you are now a son, not a slave. We call that identity, identification. So you get saved, you're on your way to heaven, the indwelling power of the Spirit lives in you, 
But yet there is a period next of sanctification. This is a period where you, you're saved, but in order to fulfill God's call on your life, you've got to set yourself apart for a season. So identification, then sanctification, and then declaration. Like John the Baptist, once you've been sanctified and set apart, now you can declare the kingdom of God. Now you can call others into repentance because you've went through that process. The problem we deal with as Christians in the kingdom is this. Once we get to declaration, we don't realize that we have to go back continuously through that process because the enemy wants to steal your identity. The enemy wants to whisper in your ear what you did, what you do, what you used to be. And if you don't go back to who you are and who you were created to be, then you'll miss God's plan for your life. So we have to continually go through this process. And you must understand that your attitude affects your access. And Leviticus chapter 10 tells us about Aaron's two oldest sons, Nadab and Abihu. The Lord gave them specific instructions about how to give their offerings, how the offerings had to be made, how the sacrifice had to be burnt. But they didn't have the right attitude towards God. They didn't respect God or his tabernacle. They offered strange fire while being drunk. They chose their style over God's standard. And many of us have done the same things. We've chosen our style over God's standards. They dishonored God and they were killed immediately. You better be thankful for Jesus this morning because under the law, the father didn't play. And if it wasn't for Jesus, friends, we wouldn't be enjoying ourselves in this dispensation of grace like we are. Because understand this, he is holy, he is righteous, and because of his son, he's gracious. But there will come a time where the son will judge all of us. Dishonor and disobedience taints our worship. What does it mean? To walk in dishonor or dis, to dishonor someone or something. Dishonor means to bring shame on yourself or someone else. See, I believe in kingdom. And I'm living my life by kingdom principles. And the more I learn about the kingdom, the more God blesses me in the kingdom. Because I'm learning that if I live my life according to his principles, God blesses me. And I like being blessed. And one of the first principles I learned was the principle of honor. The ability to honor people who don't honor you. The ability to walk in honor when you've been dishonored. I want you to get your mind around that this morning. If you'll learn this principle in the workplace, in your relationships, God will promote you. Some of you are wondering why you are stuck in whatever situation you're stuck in. Relationship, occupation, whatever it may be. Could it be you don't know how to honor somebody? Well, pastor, my boss doesn't like me. Well, how are you gonna change the game? They don't like you. So by faith, do something different that grabs their heart. Serve them after they've cursed you. Bless them after you got passed over for the promotion. Walk in kingdom because let me tell you, promotion comes from on high. If you're walking in intimacy with God and you're giving off the right kind of odor, God will remove them and promote you. That's the God I serve. Attitude affects access. When you have the wrong kind of attitude, you will not walk in kingdom. The Bible says, honor everyone. Outdo one another in showing honor. Let me tell you, some of you are not going to like this, but I'm just going to be real. You go back through my social media, go back eight or 12 years, I've never criticized a sitting president, ever. Not Barack Obama and not Donald Trump. I don't believe in it. I don't believe you dishonor people in authority. You don't have to agree with their policies and most definitely you don't compromise scripture. But I don't dishonor those who God has placed in authority over me. 
I believe in that principle. And I'm fed up with people who don't. The Bible says we are to honor everyone. Go above and beyond in showing honor. All human beings, Romans 12, are made in the image of God and worthy of honor. God crowns humanity, David would say, with glory and honor. Honor is a principle you must understand. There's too much jealousy in the kingdom of God. Why can't we pull for people to be blessed? Why are we jealous when someone else gets the promotion? Why should it matter what God is doing for someone else? My second dream in my life was to play college ball. Didn't happen. Things happened. My first dream was to do exactly what I'm doing. Second dream was to play college ball. Didn't happen. But I honored my friends that got to. I threw a party for my two best friends that got scholarships. I blessed, just like my son has done. He's got four offers. He blesses his friends that are going to Auburn or Tennessee or wherever. And God's gonna take care of him because of that. You can choose to be a hater or you can choose to honor someone. And when you choose to walk in honor, God will take you places that you never thought you could go. I believe with all of my heart that because I chose to honor my friends who got to live a dream I wanted to live, God allowed me to do things that most people don't get to do. Let me give you a few examples. First for you Tennessee fans. In 1998, I walked through the tee when Tennessee beat Florida. My friend and coach at Baylor, Victor McClure, took me on his recruiting visit. I shook Philip Fulmer's hand on the 50-yard line. How many people who aren't Tennessee fans get to go through the tee, see the Vols beat Florida, and be in the locker room after it happened the year they won a national championship? I've met Fulmer. I've met Bowden. He's spoken here. I've been on the 50-yard line of Florida State. Tommy Bowden. Gene Stallings. God has allowed me to go places and meet people that I admire, not because he's any respecter of person. I believe with all my heart it's because I'm not a hater. Yes. And in the kingdom of God, we've got too many haters. You need to get up under that person that is walking in what you want to walk in, in business, ministry, whatever it may be, and learn what they did to get where they are, not stand from afar throwing stones. Because right, right, right. nothing just happens. Give me, let me give you some examples quickly. What are some examples of dishonor? You sabotage someone's leadership behind the scenes over a disagreement. It means you expose a weakness in someone else out of jealousy or envy. Y'all better wake up and listen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You remember when Noah, Noah saved mankind. Yeah. I believe he was tired of the smell. He gets off the ark. First thing he does is get drunk. Most of y'all would have got drunk too. <laughs> Could you imagine? One of his sons covered his nakedness, the other one exposed his nakedness, and the Bible says that generations were cursed because one son walked in dishonor and one walked in honor. Cursed be to you, Canaan. When you expose someone's weakness out of jealousy or envy, you bring a curse on your life. You say, Pastor, I'm just, I'm just holding them accountable. Let me tell you, God doesn't need your help. Remember, with that same measure, you judge others. You share things about someone that you know will hurt them instead of going to them privately, like the Bible says, to restore them. Unconfessed sin brings dishonor. Sexual sin, you dishonor yourself. And specifically, 
Homosexual sin. Romans chapter 1 says that this sin comes from dishonorable passions. Doesn't mean they're any more of a sinner than you, but it certainly stands out as dishonorable. Not in the Old Testament, in the New Covenant. You don't show appreciation for the opportunities others have given you. You simply just aren't thankful for where you are, what you have, or the people who helped you get there. And you wonder why you're stuck. Your worship stinks. And you remember how I started this message. God told me I stunk. Your worship stinks. Your attitude stinks. And your future stinks if you walk in dishonor. But the good news is, Paul would say to young Timothy, who got up under him so that he could attain what Paul had in the spirit. He said, Timothy, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. God won't bless dishonor. God won't bless disobedience. And in some cases, he curses those who walk in that manner. I want us to be a church of honor. A church of honor and obedience. Doesn't mean we're always gonna get it right. Doesn't mean perfect little angels in the flesh. But I want us to honor people and honor the Lord Jesus Christ and honor the time he's given us together. Remember when God, through the prophet Samuel, instructed Saul to destroy the Amalekites. And Saul decided that he had a better way. And he spared King Agag. He had a more political move that was different than what God wanted him to do. And the Bible said, through Samuel, to obey is better than sacrifice. You see, we all tell our children, children, obey your parents unto the Lord. And honor your father and mother. It's a blessing of long life that comes with that. Let me tell you something. The older I get, the more I realize just how true those Sunday school words were. I had somebody say last week, said, Pastor, I sure do love the way you honor your parents. Now, growing up, I didn't always obey them. My lifestyle hurt them for a season. But never did I dishonor them. I don't understand this culture we live in. I tell my boys all the time, two things get your butt beat, disobedience and dishonor. I've worked too hard for y'all to be dishonored. And this culture that we live in, kids getting away with murder, acting crazy, won't respect their parents. And we wonder why we're in war, we're divided, people coming into schools with guns, shooting up the school. It's because the child wasn't taught honor. Maybe the mama bailed, maybe the daddy bailed, whatever it was, they weren't taught the principles of honor. And I'm telling you, you allow your kid to walk all over you, you'll invest in them later through lawyers, through their bond. Am I rubbing wrong this morning? To obey is better than sacrifice. The Bible says obey your parents, obey those that rule over you. Obey authorities, obey God's word. And I close right here. Christ-like faith releases Christ-like fragrance. God is impressed by faith. What you think is weird impresses God and gives off the right kind of aroma. You ask any kingdom-minded person how they got to where they got to, and their answer will have something to do with faith. They took a chance. They were willing to risk it all. If you want to move from where you are, 
to where God wants you to go to, faith is the answer. And when you operate in faith, when you make a declaration that nobody can believe except God, Bahash, that smells good. That gets the attention of a holy God. When you call down the fire by faith, that gets God's attention. When you look and command that mountain to move, that gets God's attention. When you decide to forgive and walk in restoration instead of holding a grudge, that gets, God, that gets God's attention. When you decide to walk in honor, that gets God's attention. You see, we're not supposed to be like everybody else. There's supposed to be something different about us. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Faith is not just the reaction we have to a loving God that gets grace into our hearts. Faith is supposed to be a way of life. Faith to say it. Faith to do it. Faith to move towards it. Faith to break away and walk in your own anointing. Faith takes you places. Because it gets God's attention. I know people who've decided that the job that they have, while sufficient, is not enough. God's called them to kingdom thinking, kingdom business opportunities. And you know what? You'll never get where you want to get to if you don't swing. If you don't go for it. Had someone tell me one time, he said, the difference between, Pastor Ronnie, it was a financial person, and he said the difference between middle class and wealthy is most wealthy people who didn't inherit it at one point risk every dime they had. And he said, to move from here to here, you gotta be willing to risk it all. Now with three kids, I don't know if I'm there yet. But I'm thinking about kingdom though. You may lose all your friends. You may lose everything, but if you gain Jesus, you've got it all. You've got it all. And faith will propel you into your destiny. Bahash is the response. It can be positive or negative, but I believe God is calling us to be worshipers. In February, I'm going to lay out the vision again for you. Very detailed vision. And God told me last year that this year was not about how many famous people could fill this pulpit, how many conferences we could have. We're going to have some cool stuff. But I've canceled some of it. Because I really feel that the Spirit wants this year to be about you church being who God's called it to be being an honorable vessel prepared for every good work giving off the right kind of aroma that's pleasing to God so that when people come into this atmosphere even if we get it wrong the atmosphere and the fragrance will be so strong they'll be drawn back here because Jesus lives here and his ambassadors serve here so that's the vision. You say, Pastor Ronnie, I, I'm convicted. I, I realize that my life gives off an aroma. I realize that my attitude affects my access. I realize I need to give off a different kind of fragrance. How do I do it? Paul would tell the Galatian church that the law was a tutor to get us to repentance. But that the grace of God comes through the process of putting on Christ. So I want to challenge you this morning to put on Christ. Put on Christ. Put him on. If you smell a little funky, what do you do? You put something on. So I want you to put on Christ this morning. Bow your head and close your eyes with me. 
Jesus came as the fulfillment of every Hebrew prophecy, came for sinners, turned religion upside down, came for people like you and people like me. The Bible says all we have to do to be in intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ is confess Him as Lord and Savior. Believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead and we shall be saved. Simple as that. Believe that Jesus was who He said He was. Believe in what He did. Invite Him to be Lord of your life. Repent. Change your mind. Give off a new aroma. And you'll be saved. Oh, hallelujah. You know, Christ-like faith does indeed release a Christ-like fragrance. You know, God responds to faith. What we think is weird, what we think is out of the ordinary, God responds to. He responds to people who think they can move mountains. He responds to a young shepherd boy who believes he could defeat Goliath. He responds when our faith moves others and moves him. He will respond to our Christ-like faith. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Faith is believing in that which you can't see. I want to give you an opportunity right now to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, it says in Romans, and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead. You shall be saved. It is grace by faith. I believe with all of my heart God wants to save you. He wants to give you purpose and you need to give off the right kind of aroma and it starts with putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So wherever you are, just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you've been born again. You need to connect with the church. If you're in the Chattanooga region, we hope you'll connect with Abbas House. It's a great church. I'd love to see you one Sunday morning. Now, we have a worship series, many messages about worship from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. If you'll buy a set of these messages, it will bless you or bless a family member and it will help us be on television and do media around the world, do missions around the world, and help us preach the message of grace because we're grace people here at the House of Grace. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Worship is more than just singing songs at church. It's all about our intimacy with God. Pastor Ronnie Phillips helps you understand the many facets of worship in his extensive 10-part series, Worship, the missing jewel of the church. You'll learn the basics in Worship 101 and discover three-dimensional worship, sacrificial worship, the pathway to His presence, and so much more. These messages will help you focus on God and to develop a lifestyle of worship. Order the 10-part set on CD or download the MP3 sermons today at RonniePhillips.org or call 1-800-877-6493. What are you waiting for? It's time to worship. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.